it was interesting watching the clip of the conversation, which is now 40 plus uh, years old. And it, it was after I'd uh, spent a, an, uh, an evening and all night, an all nighter uh, on that, uh, that I uh, began to notice this uh, phenomenon of the, the, the alignment, really in the, in the way that Yuri was talking, of the cut point with the tendency of the actor, in this case Gene Hackman, to blink very close to that cut point. And I didn't know what to make of it, uh, and I went out to get some breakfast, and I happened to pass by a uh, Christian Science reading room. This was like Sunday morning at you know, 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, so it was very lonely, uh, uh, area of the city, uh, but there was an interview with John Houston, uh, who had just made Fat City, and he was talking to the inter uh, to the uh, journalist about uh, focus of attention and how between looking at John Houston and looking at the lamp in the room, uh, the uh, interviewer's eyes would would blink, and his point was that's what the cut is, uh, that the intervening material is not important. The lamp is important because I asked you to look at it, and now I'm important because you're looking at me, said John Houston. Uh, but in between is just noise, and so there is a, a lowering of the threshold, uh, a blink, uh, to kind of clear the ground away and bring into more close mental juxtaposition the lamp and John Houston. And that was when the light went on, and I thought, oh, that's what's going on. Um, and then I began watching people and engaging them in conversation and just being very observant of when do they blink. And this pattern began to emerge, which um, it w would be very interesting to do a, a mass survey using infrared uh, light of an audience and see if the blink points uh, of a large number of people coincide. The metaphor would be somebody who's designing a boat um, you know, you're, you're building the boat in a, a warehouse type environment, but the sea is not ev ever very far from your thoughts <laughs> because this boat has to survive mm. in the ocean. And similarly, a film is a kind of yacht that has to survive in the sea of audience participation. And so, you know, we're designing the boat to be beautiful just on its own as a piece of sculpture. And so the film also should be beautiful on its own, but we know that it has to survive the kind of uh, intensity, uh, mental intensity, that an audience uh, will subject the film to. And so, yeah, we, we think about it perhaps not 100% of the time, but yeah. the, just the, the way a naval architect thinks of the sea, filmmakers think of the audience. As I was doing a smaller budgeted film, you, there are, Tens of millions of dollars are spent on CGI uh, to get the same type of brain activity that you can get. I learned early on with Swingers when I made a phone call, I was leaving messages, and the whole audience would squirm that I was leaving all these messages on the answering machine. It was awful. And you could really, if you have good storytelling, you can get the same responses. Also with Chef, there was a lot of food sequences, yeah. and I noticed that people would groan as they showed brisket being uncovered in a, in a smoker in Austin, Texas. And so there are analog tools to get those, those things. But, but when you learn what it is, you really, uh, essentially, as, as Walt was saying, you want that boat to be on the water. You want to work that room. You mm. want people to connect with what you're doing. Uh, Birdman, which is, uh, uh, is coming out, uh, 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 they've, it's, it's ostensibly no, no cuts, you know. And, and, but, there's, but there are cuts, hmm. but you stitch. And if you look at uh, uh, Children of Men, there's a, a sequence yeah. where, or um, there's a, a True Detective on television. So people are really pushing the boundaries because, it, because an intrinsic tension takes place when there aren't any cuts either. You don't realize in gravity, that tension yeah. begins to be generated when you realize there's a whole reel without any cuts. Now, you might not notice it consciously, but you feel yourself becoming uncomfortable. Yeah. And so, the cutting pattern creates a, a, a res it, emotional it, response. It also uh, changes the, what the relationship of what you can do with sound in a theatrical setting. Uh, if if you have a uh, a film with a lot of quick 
cuts uh, and dialogue at the same time, the beginning of social network, for instance, uh, there's almost a pull towards the center that it's very difficult to do surround type sounds in that environment, whereas gravity, the first 17 minutes, there's no cut, and they were able to uh, use the whole theater and move the dialogue around the theater, and it was not disorienting, whereas norm in a normal, even in a normal big budget spectacular film, too much of that becomes very distracting because of the, the violence of the cut. And, you know, we, we have to think for a second about how violent the cut is, mm -hmm. uh, that it's the total displacement of your field of vision in an instant, and yet the mind is happy, uh, you know, can, can take it, and not only can take it, but, but in a sense loves it. That, that cutting is not just something that we have to do because of the discontinuous nature of the way we shoot films. We actually, uh, both as filmmakers and audiences, like these uh, sudden juxtapositions of concepts, uh, kind of like I was saying, you know, John Huston's face to the lamp at this very basic level. You also, don't forget, this is one of the curious things about the move from film to digital. When you see a film in a theater, if that film is two hours long, you're spending one hour in darkness. Because for every <laughs> frame, there is an equal amount of time where there's nothing on the screen. And your mind is primarily engaged in removing the darkness. Uh, but if you take a spot meter to a film, and, and a film film, uh, and point the spot meter at the uh, screen, you see the needle mm. going crazy because every frame is causing a burst of light and then dark, light, dark, light, dark. And your mind is busy at that very primal level smoothing all that out. That does not happen with digital projection. Digital projection is an image, and then that image is instantly replaced by another image. And before digital really took off, I wondered, are we going to you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater? Mm -hmm. At some level, this alternation of light and dark engages us at this primary uh, sensory level. And when that's gone, is some gas going to go out of the balloon? Mm -hmm. But it clearly is not, not. happening.